Well, good evening, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Well, so my name is Vivaldi Jean Marie. I am the convener of this evening's uh, speaker, um, Mr. Ido Daniel. So, Mr. Daniel is. It's okay to say your age, Joe, so it's okay. Yeah. So young, but very, very sophisticated <laughs> at the same time. So he's 28 years old. He's a social media expert and the director of the Israeli Students Combating Antisemitism, which is a leading scholarship project of the National Union of Israeli Students and the world's largest initiative dealing with online racism, anti-Semitism, and Holocaust denial. Edo is a publicist and a public speaker focusing on the issues of public diplomacy, cyber hate, human rights, and the connection between social media trends and hate crimes. Also, Ido is a member of the joint EU Israel expert group on the Forum Organization on Fighting Against Antisemitism, Racism, and Xenophobia. Among other places, Mr. Ido was a guest speaker at the Neset, the EU Parliament, the EU Commission, the Council of Europe, the Fifth Global Forum for Combating Antisemitism in Jerusalem, and the OSCE's Berlin Conference on Antisemitism. Also, he served as a research assistant at the Institute for National Security Studies in Tel Aviv, focusing on cyber terrorism. He holds a BA in Political Science from Tel Aviv University. He is currently perusing his MA in Diplomacy Studies at TAU. And this evening, he will be speaking to us about dealing with online antisemitism. So welcome, Mr. Daniel. It's the door. Thank you for the long introduction. Um, so I don't need to introduce myself. Uh, and uh, yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. You want me to move this chair out of your way? Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. I like it. Um, so, thank you very much for having me today. Um, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and speak uh, uh, here in the, in the Institute. Um, I will start uh, a, a, with a small introduction of uh, ISCA, which stands for Israeli Students Combating Antisemitism, and then I will show you uh, some of the things uh, we've been dealing with in the past uh, four years. Uh, four years of activity at the ISA. Um, just a little bit uh, of a background about uh, uh, about ISCA. It's been four years uh, of growing online activity. We just began our fifth year. Uh, we have 100 student activists nationwide. This is a scholarship program, as uh, Mr. Vivaldi uh, here uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, all of my act activist employees. Um, receive scholarship from the National Union of Israeli Students for combating anti-Semitism. Um, and they come from, they study in different departments, some of them study medicine, some of them study theater or so uh, 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 humanities and so on, but they have this passion uh, for uh, combating uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, online. Um, the extent of what we do uh, the number of platforms that we, we, we are active in makes uh, us uh, uh, the largest initiative of its kind uh, today uh, in the world. And uh, I will speak uh, uh, in a minute about it. What exactly uh, do we do? Uh, first of all, this is the, the one thing that we are very famous uh, uh, for, is monitoring, identifying, and reporting anti semitic material. We work according to the EU working definition of anti-Semitism, which was endorsed by uh, the United States uh, State uh, Department as well, as a working definition for anti-Semitism. And um, we do also uh, educating with content-affiliated platforms. I will show you uh, an example about it. Uh, raising awareness through counter-speech. And this entire operation 
is uh, active in 17 different languages, from Middle Eastern languages such as Arabic, Farsi, uh, go a bit north, Turkish, and European languages, of course, um, Eastern, Western, um, and uh, all of these <coughs> logos of uh, social media platforms that you see, these are the main uh, these are the main platforms that ISCA is active uh, in uh, monitoring, identifying, and reporting, working with social media corporations, uh, which hold today most of the internet traffic. Most of the people that use the uh, internet today use social media, and uh, we are concentrating our efforts over there because most of the people are there and most of the anti-semitism and the racism and the holocaust denial is there as well uh, comes with the people uh, this is a summary of uh, our activity for uh, the year 2015 um, not only nice colors uh, number of cases I will show you the numbers uh, in the next slide but um, you can see uh, how many cases we've dealt with, uh, we've been dealing with uh, 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 throughout the year of 2015. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, again, major social media platforms. When, and when I say cases, when I uh, hear, um, I'm speaking about every single, every single case is uh, an anti-Semitic tweet. It's an anti-Semitic photo on Facebook. It's an anti-Semitic video on YouTube or an anti-Semitic uh, post on Instagram. Um, and I will show you the numbers. And you can see the numbers uh, from January to December and the summary of cases. So it is a total number of 20, more than, uh, a bit more than 29,000 cases. 20, more than uh, 29,000 complaints that we filed to the social media corporations about uh, anti-Semitism uh, in their premises, uh, on their websites. Uh, you can see the numbers of uh, Facebook, Twitter was a huge deal. A lot of anti-Semitism on Twitter. Uh, they had a very, very liberal uh, uh, policy when it comes to uh, things you can say in the social network. Um, Please look at the uh, uh, right chart of removal rates. We have this data as well. We know for a fact that after we reported, after we identified those materials being anti-Semitic, only 26% of them were removed. The other 74% are still online. They weren't removed uh, because the social media policy teams uh, felt that uh, they're not anti-Semitic. Uh, and that is included, uh, includes, for example, mm -hmm. Facebook not taking down Holocaust denial. So they feel, uh, uh, as a policy, that it's not anti-Semitism. We can talk about it uh, later uh, in the Q&A section, but uh, uh, just a thought for us uh, uh, for the start of uh, my talk. I mentioned before the content, uh, 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 the content uh, 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 affiliated uh, platforms, uh, and one of them is uh, Yahoo Answers. How many of you are familiar with this tool? Yahoo.com, I believe, that is a very big website. A lot of a lot of uh, people use it. But Yahoo Answers, Yahoo Answers, okay, uh, uh, is a popular Q&A uh, platform for people from all over the world to ask questions. Uh, the people that you decide. So it's people to people, it's a community, and you can ask whatever you want. Uh, questions about science, uh, even uh, stupid questions like uh, if uh, my uh, if I drink too much Coca-Cola, will my teeth follow? Maybe, I don't know, but this is an actual question we are seeing there. We are intercepting all of the questions that we feel that need the right answer uh, because there are a lot of people there that are trying to manipulate and give bad answers. Uh, people that hold anti-Semitic views are trying to uh, give answers to those people that are asking things about 
Jews, Judaism in general, about Jewish communities, about Zionism, about uh, uh, Jewish tradition, uh, about Jewish customs, uh, and uh, uh, most of the people that we encountered uh, in this platform are teenagers. And they, the ones that use the English platform, or this, the English Q&A platform, are American teenagers. 13, 14, 15, they heard something on maybe at, at home, at school, uh, and they just ask it. They don't have anyone to ask, so they will ask it on Yahoo Answer. Just type it, type it in, they will get an answer within an hour or so. What to show you, by the way, this is a, 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 I didn't mention it. This platform is active in French, English, Spanish, Italian, and German. We answer to those questions in all five languages. How do you spell uh, Yao? A Y A H. Yahoo. 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 This is you're making fun of my accent. No. 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 This is in French. Do Jews control the media? Thousands of those questions. It's always all the media, or Hollywood, or the Federal Reserve, or the world, or Barack Obama, or the White House in general. It's always there. Why did Germans hate and kill Jews? I just read a novel that has the Holocaust in it. This is a genuine question. Of someone, I don't know, probably a youngster. He, heard, he, he read this book, and it had this uh, word, Holocaust, in it. And he's asking, basically, what is this uh, word Holocaust? What is this Holocaust? Uh, can you explain it, please? Um, and we do. We are answering them. Um, another one. What, why did Jews cause the Bosnian War? <laughs> no Jews involved, just to make sure. But again, this is a common, uh, 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 common you know, blood libel, uh, conspiracy theory, the people hear all the time on the internet, outside, in the physical world, uh, and they ask it uh, because uh, they feel safe to do so. Was the Holocaust just a Jewish propaganda? Uh, did the Jews make up the Holocaust? Another question. Again, hundreds of them. This is just a glimpse. And I want you to look at this question, please. Uh, is this a Jewish looking nose? I used to have a more or less sticking out nose when I was younger, but now I am 14. Does my nose look Jewish? I have nothing against any religion or race, but I'm just wondering. <coughs> I have to tell you, when I saw it for the first time, I laughed, and then I thought, after a minute, it's really sad. Because I thought about this American teenager, and thought to myself, who is he? Who told him? Where did he hear? I mean, where did it come from? Uh, he got picked on at school. He said at school, someone bullied him. Uh, maybe on the internet. Uh, uh, we know children can be mean, but uh, again, and he felt safe to take a photo of himself and put it online and just ask if he has a Jewish-looking nose. It's very sad. But what was the answer? Yes, the answer all was all the uh, Of course, we are explaining that this is a common uh, stereotype. stereotype anti Semitic stereotype. Uh, I mean, there's no basis uh, for a, a Jewish looking, non Jewish looking nose. Uh, yeah. Some of the uh, monitoring, some of the examples uh, that we have uh, uh, from the world of monitoring social media, which is a wild world, um, I want to ask you a question before I start. How many of you have missed Adolf Hitler? What? Missed him? You didn't? No. Well, Adolf Hitler is alive and well on Twitter. Adolf Hitler has a Twitter account. This is uh, this print screen is for well, I think uh, more than a year ago, uh, maybe 18 months, uh, when Adolf Hitler only had uh, 252,000 followers. 
This is a more up-to-date green screen. Four hundred, more than 400,000 followers. For those of you that are familiar with Twitter, that is a lot. That is a lot. Actually, I showed it uh, at the briefing at the European Parliament. And I told them, who were later very upset about it, but didn't mean to upset anyone, uh, that uh, Hitler has more followers than the uh, official accounts of the European Parliament and the European Commission combined. And this is a concern. And most of the people that follow Twip, uh, this, uh, 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 I'm following it because I, I want to know what he's posting. But I want to show you some of the posts because it's supposed to be funny, but it's not. This is uh, uh, one of his tweets, as if uh, Hitler is uh, living with us today and uh, tweeting about his everyday life, like gorgeous day I go today with a, a photo of Birkenau. Um, uh, tweeting uh, uh, funny uh, uh, memes about uh, four things everyone hates. Hope you can see the photo. When you're low on Wi-Fi, when you, you have a low battery on your smartphone, and Jews praying in the synagogue. Or just uh, uh, say goodnight. Uh, uh, keep calm and hate Jews. Uh, again, uh, most of the people that share those posts are white supremacists, uh, or neo-Nazis uh, on Twitter. And again, uh, uh, this is the phenomenon. Now, before I got here, I asked my team to give you a few examples from Twitter as well about uh, what's going on in the, the discourse on social media. And um, whenever I go into, and people invite me to speak at a certain location, I ask my team to give a, a, Tweets, anti-Semitic, give me uh, examples for tweets in a uh, radius of, uh, this is a radius of uh, approximately 60 miles from uh, New York City. And I want to show you some of the tweets that uh, uh, we've uh, captured. Again, this is just a glimpse, this is just a few examples, just a minute. Um, the words that we uh, uh, were looking for, combination of words was, sorry, my mother is not here so I can say it, uh, fucking Jews, uh, and son, I really want to kill the fucking Jews at the JCC, I pay for drivers uh, and for nothing, I'm supposed to have my license, uh, whatever, uh, this guy wants to uh, run over Jews at the JCC. No, no, he, he tried to get his license, he he didn't pass his driver's ed class. The Jews. Yeah. He took his well, driver's ed class in the JCC and he yeah. flunked his driver's test so he blames the Jews at the JCC. All right. All right. So the guy's really target. All right. Now you said a bad word. I've had a bad word. Um, please Hollywood, stop <laughs> with the 3D <laughs> shit. You fucking Jews always want the extra but Look at the locations. First one was Staten Island. This is Union City, New Jersey. Uh, third one is Staten Island as well, New York City. Uh, Obama sounds more like a Nazi propaganda minister than the President of the United States. Okay. Fucking Jews closing the street for some parade. I guess this is the, the Israeli parade on Fifth Avenue. Uh, guess they didn't like when I drove on the sidewalk to get past them. Not, <laughs> not, not even going to pronounce the hashtag he used uh, with the N-word. Uh, this is Johnny Danger with his actual photo. So many fucking Jews on this ferry. Um, fucking Jews trying to cope a uh, lawsuit everywhere they go. I can't take fucking Jews every time I see one. I want to punch them in the face. They should drop dead with their big furry hats. And the last one, uh, I wish I was in Nazi Germany so I could kill Jews legally. Uh, those people are not afraid to post those tweets with their location, with their actual photos of their faces, uh, sometimes with their real names, uh, on Twitter. Another example from Facebook, from France. How many of you are familiar with this guy? Yodoné. Yodoné is a comedian. Actually, he's an anti-Semite and a Holocaust denier making fun of the Holocaust 
and uh, 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 the Jews in France. Uh, he started a campaign. It's been going on for years now. Um, he's been prosecuted a lot, and so on. This is uh, he even invented a certain gesture, uh, the reverse Nazi salute. In French, it's uh, called canel. Uh, and this uh, canel, because it's illegal to perform the actual Nazi salute, so he invented another one uh, to upset the Jews and uh, uh, maybe upset the authorities. Um, and it started online. This is a phenomenon that started online. He has more than uh, uh, almost 2 million uh, likes on his Facebook pages. There are several of them. And he asked his fans, please, uh, make this canal, show the Jews that we can make this reverse Nazi salute. Uh, make this canal, send me the photos. I will repost them so everybody can see. And he said it's a political gesture and not an anti-Semitic gesture, but uh, it started, uh, by the way, this is one of the, uh, uh, again, making fun of the Holocaust. He called the, he calls the Holocaust Shoah Nanas. Someone asked him in an interview once, why would you call the Holocaust Shoah Nanas? He said that the Holocaust would have uh, more of an exotic name. Um, and people started to send photos. Uh, to him, and he reposted it. This is an entire classroom doing it in France. This is someone doing it with a Francois Hollande. Um, and then people started, of course, it's not a political movement, right? It's, it's a political movement, right? Uh, just it's not, it's not an anti-Semitic one. They have nothing against the Jews, of course. I'm being cynical. Uh, this is a for synagogues, Jewish cemeteries, Holocaust memorials, the Anne Frank's house in, a in Amsterdam. Uh, this is in Delancey, north of Paris, where uh, French Jews were deported to Auschwitz. Um, Holocaust memorial uh, uh, in the heart of Berlin. And uh, uh, the tracks in Birkenau. Someone thought it was funny to do this uh, reverse Nazi salute over there when he was visiting there. Um, another one. This is someone uh, that did it at the plenary in Strasbourg of the European Union. Uh, actually showed it to the European Union. They were very upset about it. They uh, later found him and fired him because they found out that this guy is working there. And French uh, tourists also did it and posted it online when they visited Israel, where, of course, is the holiest place for Jews. Um, this is in the Western world, the Kotel. Um, yeah. Let's uh, skip that. Um, I told you about counter speech. It's all, not always taking down those materials. It's fighting it with... Uh, we, we need also to, uh, to fight it with, uh, with sometimes with humor. Uh, so we had an ongoing campaign about it show you a few examples uh, uh, this is a, a, a this is a graphic uh, a photo that we uh, uh, posted when he was fined with 40,000 euros by the French court um, uh, this is another one je suis anti-semite uh, at this point I'm anti-semitic that much uh, uh, and some other stuff uh, to make fun of it, uh, uh, to uh, yeah, uh, just to uh, ridicule this phenomenon. This is another example of how can you fight anti-Semitism without actual taking it down, but uh, with explaining to people that this is ridiculous. Um, and I would like to uh, take this debate to the next level and show you some examples for what I call the connection between cyber hate and hate crimes. Because most of the people would say, you know, uh, uh, stop the mambo jumbo. This is uh, uh, on the computer. This is on the smartphone. What do you want? Uh, they can't get us. It's there. Uh, in the physical world, it's entirely different. I want to show you a few examples from across the world how uh, uh, anti-Semitic organizations, anti-Semitic people, uh, are able to uh, abuse social media for their own needs. This is from France. 
during the Operation Protective Edge. Uh, looks like the common anti-Israel slash pro-Palestinian Facebook page, right? There are thousands of them. I don't care about that um, because um, this is not the, the page cover itself is not the issue. My mother was, we told, always told me, never judge a book by, by its cover. My mother uh, was right. Well, she's always right. <laughs> but you need to look inside those uh, uh, Facebook pages in order to understand uh, what, what they're all about. And this face, particular Facebook page was a hit list of French, uh, French Jews living in Paris. They are all being accused of being part of the Jewish Defense League. Look at their faces, they're not. Um, the Facebook search bar allows you to search for people, but it also allows you to uh, ask for a query. So you can ask with uh, Jewish names or Jewish common uh, family names in France, such as Cohen, Asuli, Azulai. These are common, uh, uh, very common. Uh, uh, family names in France uh, of Jews and ask for people named Cohen living in Paris and it will give you a list and once you have the list you can start collecting the data about those people you have a photo you have their name some of them listed their family members uh, on their profile so you have this is my uncle this is my mother and this is my sister right and once maybe some of them use the location services Facebook provide you. Please check in in this restaurant, or please provide us uh, with the information which uh, event will you attend tomorrow. This is all on Facebook. It's all sometimes it's public. You can gather this information. What those people did is very simple. Once they had the photo and the uh, and the name, they called the phone company. Please give me the address of and, and telephone number of Philippe Asouli living in Paris. And they had it. So now you have an address, you have a phone number, you have the photo and the name, and that's it. And every single photo here, once you clicked it, you had the entire information. And the, uh, the message was clear. Go at them. How do we know it? Because we also monitor the people who share those posts. This is one of them, one of the posts that was, that was shared by a, someone from this uh, Facebook page. It's in French and I will translate it to you. We have names of members in the LDJ, those people before. If someone is interested, I can send it to, you, to, send it to him in a private message. It will be a human hunt. This is uh, 14th of July, 2014. Who recognizes the day? Day of the Bastille. How symbolic or not? How sad for France, in my opinion? Uh, but again, um, the abuse of social media, the abuse of Facebook, uh, to generate hate crimes against people, to physically attack them just because they're Jewish. Another example from the United Kingdom. Uh, this is the Facebook page of the National Liberation. I, I didn't mention it, but all of the things that I show you, all of the uh, examples, are no longer online. They uh, are down uh, because of our request from the policy teams in the uh, social media companies. Uh, the National Liberation uh, a organization, uh, an extreme right-wing organization or an association uh, in, uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, wanted to liberate Stamford Hill, a well-known Jewish uh, neighborhood uh, in London, from the Jews. The justification of London, uh, um, I guess the justification of London, as they say. Uh, this is the guy that uh, established this movement. His name is Joshua Bonhill. Or, uh, he has, he had, this is no longer online as well, um, 109,000 followers. Again, it is a lot in terms of Twitter, a lot of followers. Um, and he listed here. Uh, his description, Joshua Bornhill's official Twitter account, fascist and nationalist, he said it. Uh, this is one of the posts, join us for Liberate Stanford Hill on March 22nd. Um, you can see the imagery and so on. <coughs> Producing blood libels like this, that the Jews during Passover 
uh, slaughtered 20,000 puppies uh, for a uh, matzah. <laughs> Who took down the uh, German wings plane? Of course, the Jews. And what did you look at this uh, uh, call for a launch meeting, participating in a launch meeting? Uh, the second paragraph says, Topics of discussion will include the Jewish question, why genocide, free speech, and more. Now, the use of the terminology, the Jewish question, I think uh, in this room is uh, 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 you are familiar with, uh, uh, with the phrase, uh, familiar with the terminology, um, and of course, it's, he did it on purpose. I want to show you some examples of the things that we handle in Israel during our uh, recent terror wave uh, and the incitement in Arabic. Uh, another example of how to use uh, social media for promoting terrorism and uh, calls for uh, murder. Uh, uh, for example, this uh, Facebook page, Shihab News Agency, it's not a news agency, it's a Hamas affiliated Facebook page that poses as a, a news agency actually just uh, uh, Facebook account <coughs> and Twitter account. Um, here are some of the things they posted in the past, promoting uh, car ramming attacks, uh, see the Temple Mount in the background, of course. Um, this is another one, and another one, look at the, again the imagery, the stereotypes, the Jews will always look like Jews. Uh, of course, the knife intifada uh, um, is like a manual how to identify someone Jewish on the streets of Jerusalem and how to stab them. This is a very uh, important one. I only, you know, this is this is land of Israel as a grave and the Jews are marching to their death and by knife attack uh, to their grave uh, and uh, Palestine will be their grave. Um, this is another one. This is a video that I would like to show you. How much time do we have?
found another person see it and said he will for the sake of Al-Aqsa I will take my revenge the song is the Shaheed will open the gates of uh, so on and um, have another one it's very short they are aware of young people, young Palestinian people uh, uh, looking at uh, their smartphones all day and being on Facebook. Uh, again, look at the stereotypes, look at the Jews now kicking uh, the small Palestinian children, the guy is cheated, uh, and he's saying, well, enough is enough, uh, grabbing his knife, uh, stabbing them. <coughs> Um, those videos, there are dozens of them. This is just a, this is just two examples. Dozens of them uh, on Facebook, on YouTube. We are chasing them around uh, because people act uh, because of them. people act when they see those lies of the Jews trying to destroy the Laksa Mosque and the Jews are trying to do this and doing that. Uh, people act. Um, and we're trying uh, uh, to, uh, chase it, uh, to chase it, to uh, chase them and take them down. Uh, terrorism, big word. Another uh, example of the use of social media uh, is manuals. And you have manuals on Facebook and YouTube, how to build bombs, how to make explosives. Uh, I showed it today also, uh, I met, uh, had a briefing with NYPD uh, and I showed them uh, what, can, what can be done because it doesn't matter where in the world it was posted. People here can see it too. Um, this is a, a how to make, a, it's a manual from Facebook, it's a video, five minute video, how to make a, a, a bomb out of a Coca-Cola cup. Uh, how to make a gas bomb, uh, this is the entire mechanism and so on, you can see it. Uh, how to make explosives, uh, and this is the actual, so all was experiment, and this is the actual uh, explosion. They tested it, and it worked. Um, I want to show you another video. Um, so okay, you have the knife, you want to stab someone, but how can you make it more efficient? This video from Facebook describes uh, how exactly, uh, by using the, the Israeli local version of the rain, I have some more videos how to manufacture uh, firearms, uh, how to manufacture explosives. Uh, if you want, you can, I can stand here for hours and just show you those videos. We <laughs> have a lot. Um, but yeah, again, this is, a, 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 this is something uh, uh, that is uh, going on. Also, uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, show you. Uh, from again from our monitoring team 
is uh, anti-Semitism on shopping sites. You know that uh, uh, shopping sites are very, very popular here in the United States, in other places also. But uh, they have a lot of anti-Semitism in there uh, as well. Um, the things you can buy are uh, uh, as follow. Of course, anti-Semitic literature, such as Mein Kampf, uh, neo-Nazi copies of Mein Kampf, by the way, uh, I managed to uh, uh, order one to Israel. They were shipped to me from Europe, from France, actually, which is completely forbidden to sell and uh, uh, to sell or to order or whatever. Uh, this is my camp, uh, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, International Jew by uh, Ford. Another uh, book that you can uh, find on eBay. Um, uh, Zazzle.com, another uh, popular shopping uh, website. Uh, you can take uh, a, a, an anti Semitic poster. This is from France, uh, very famous, uh, from uh, 1898. Um, the Jews trying to control the world. Um, and you can have it on every single product you ever imagine. Uh, you see uh, iPhone cases, pins, coffee mugs, uh, even uh, t-shirts, even children's t-shirts, beer mugs, and tank tops. Blame the Rothschilds tank top, uh, also available or Cap of 9/11 was a Russia job. You can get it all uh, on Zazzle.com. Mm. For the end of uh, my presentation, um, we spoke about the Odonais in France. Um, I want to show you another example uh, of how to deal with it without taking down materials from the internet. Um, when Facebook celebrated uh, 10 years uh, since of its, uh, the establishment of this uh, social network, uh, every single uh, Facebook user could have a look back. It was a one minute video uh, uh, that was generated by the website itself that took all of your moments since you uh, joined Facebook and gathered them to one uh, little happy video. We did the same but uh, in a humoristic way to the Odonne. I want to show you it, uh, show you this video, and with that <coughs> uh, I will finish. Things like 
the shopping sites that are, that are highly offensive or in terms of the YouTubes or in terms of the Facebook things, what do they say? And how come three quarters of them don't get taken off? All right. So uh, I, I, I was asked to repeat the questions. You asked uh, uh, for uh, what are the reactions from websites uh, making appeal uh, to them about anti-Semitism on uh, in the websites uh, to the websites uh, administrators, uh, correct? Right? Yeah, that only one out of four of your requests right work. Um, it. Uh, uh, Every single platform has its own thing. Uh, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. Uh, it's not working. I can uh, tell you, for example, the shopping sites. Um, last Christmas, we found out that with the suggestions of Christmas uh, uh, gifts, for, gifts for Christmas for your family, you can buy a Nazi umbrella. For uh, nine ninety-five dollars, um, we saw it and uh, we contacted the customer service and asked them. Um, we didn't ask them to remove it. We just told them. We notified them that uh, this is uh, on sale for Christmas, and they removed it. Uh, um, they, removed, they just removed it. This is an example. Uh, Zazel took down some of the uh, items as well. Some of them are still online. Um, when it comes to social media uh, platforms, uh, it depends because every single corporation has its own policy. Um, sometimes I do think that they don't know how anti-Semitism looks like. Um, they refuse to work with the working definition of anti-Semitism. Um, and by the end of the day, it's a corporation. Uh, I always say that uh, it doesn't matter uh, for Google, YouTube, um, whether you watch a, a cat video or you watch an anti-Semitic video, as long as you watch the video on YouTube, this is their main, uh, this is the main concern. Uh, you watch the video, you have their uh, the clicks, they got the traffic, they sold uh, commercials. That's it. Uh, and Facebook is a bit uh, well, they're getting there. Um, it's not what it used to be. It's a lot better now. We have working relations with them. Uh, they're getting to understand um, the importance of uh, this situation uh, because people get hurt. Um, and Israel is a good example because they will in Israel. They came to Israel just at the start for uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs request. At the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, they came there. They came to Israel to a series of meetings. Um, uh, they were overwhelmed. This is the first time they had to deal with this amount of hate on Facebook that actually kills people. Um, you talking about Google? Excuse me. No, Facebook. Facebook. Facebook when, policy. When did they come? Uh, two meetings in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, where they sit. No, when? 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 Was it this year? Last yeah, yeah, yeah. During October. Uh, they came to the uh, fifth global uh, forum uh, for combating anti-Semitism. Um, uh, following my request to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that organized this uh, conference. Um, they are aware of it, but again, uh, business or uh, nagging activists like me, it's always a, it's always a question of uh, who they want to. They wanted the. They made those videos. Are they from East Jerusalem? Yes. Can they place them? Um, and and I'm going to continue. Yeah. Do they get the Bituach Lumi, like the social security for every child in the family? Mm -hmm. How about to cut it? Of course. Uh, yeah. I should uh, repeat the question. Um, you asked uh, about the origin of the videos of the incitement in Arabic and who are the people that are uh, posting them, if they are East Jerusalemites. Um, most of them come from Palestinian territories. Um, I saw the, uh, how to manufacture a series of five videos, how to manufacture a bomb out of a Coca-Cola cup. 
uh, how to make explosives, how to make a pipe bomb, how to make a, a, a gas bomb, and so on. Um, they came from Hebron, uh, in, uh, for example. Uh, but some of them, yeah. Um, and you can post it anonymously as well. This is the main problem. It's anonymous, um, and everybody can see it. You can reach a lot of people in a short amount of time. Um, in the case of uh, Shihab News, by the way, Facebook, following our request and others, took down the uh, took down the, this Facebook page for one month. They cleaned all the anti-Semitism from there, and then they allowed them uh, uh, to continue with operating it. It's a very popular uh, Facebook page, one of the most popular pages in the Arab world. Uh, and again, uh, it's still uh, operational. They do have certain... It, it operates from Gaza, by the way. Uh, they're not as anti-Semitic as they used to be. They're now afraid, but... Sometimes they have uh, slips. So this gentleman, then they. Okay, so following up on those two questions, that 74% failure rate, are you noticing that the policies are changing or that there is positive pressure? And as far as making corporations care, um, you said you're working with NYPD. Are you working with like. I'm working with NYPD. Well, you said a briefing you, with them, they wanted me to speak. Well, have you had briefings with Sharad Hadeen or any kind of groups of lawyers to sue corporations into caring about this? Are you working on this on civil litigation? And also, are you working in any way with um, law enforcement in other countries filing complaints or tracking down ISPs and, like, getting them shut down, like, in, uh, in like, Israel, in the neighborhood, or in Europe and America? So I'll repeat the question. Uh, you asked me um, whether um, um, about the removal rates. Uh, you call it the seventy-four percent of failure. I dispute that. I will okay, please tell you why. Um, and uh, you asked also about the cooperation with law enforcement uh, and other governmental, non-governmental organizations uh, around the world here in the United States um, and NGOs. Uh, it's not a failure because, as you said uh, at the intro of your question, that the policies are changing. It's changing all the time. Sometimes we manage to persuade them to take to take it down. Sometimes we're not. Uh, and this is a, an ongoing issue with them. We're still working with them. Uh, it's a give and take relationship by the end of the day. Um, but I can say that. Uh, the policy teams in social media networks are getting there. Uh, they're getting in line in terms of uh, taking this matter, uh, um, taking this matter to their own hands and, and take down hateful material. Uh, it's not only anti-Semitism; it's some other stuff. It's Islamophobia. It's homophobia. It's uh, uh, anti-black hatred. Um, the Hitler account on Twitter, not only posting uh, uh, anti-Semitism, he's posting uh, uh, things against African Americans, uh, against the gay people, uh, very hateful content. So it's not just uh, the Jews that uh, are suffering from it. Maybe? In what, just, oh, just a, <laughs> a minute. Uh -huh. um, about uh, cooperation with other bodies, we do have uh, colleagues in Europe most of them are human rights NGOs, such as uh, we are uh, a civil society organization by the end of the day. Uh, and we work uh, closely with uh, civil society organizations and human rights organizations like us. Um, sometimes when it, there is an imminent threat, of course, I send it to uh, law enforcement in Israel or a, a, here in the United States, we're working with uh, um, the SCN, it's the security body for the Jewish Federations. Again, if it's something imminent and we feel that uh, it is a, a major concern, uh, we do it. Um, and if it's something that, uh, I'll give you an example. During Operation Protective Edge, uh, when uh, uh, Ron Shaul uh, uh, was abducted, uh, 
IDF soldier in Gaza, uh, as part of the propaganda machine, Hamas opened pages, uh, social media pages, on, the, on his behalf. He was already dead. But uh, for their propaganda war against Israel and against the family, um, they posted on his behalf, in Facebook page and one Twitter account, as if he's still alive, and calling for his family to release him from Gaza. So the posts uh, were as following, with the help of Google Translate, please mom, I'm here in the tunnel in Gaza, please uh, 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 take, uh, please uh, tell the government, tell Mr. Netanyahu uh, to uh, release me from uh, the hands of those terrorists. Um, and some other stuff, uh, they also had some of his personal <coughs> items that were on the body when they uh, abducted it. Um, so his dog tags, some other personal items, they were posted also on Twitter. Um, I have photos of it, uh, some print screens of it as well, and, uh, um, and some body parts as well. Um, and uh, uh, I contacted Twitter about it, because the minute I saw it, I thought to myself, oh my god, please, uh, uh, Family should not see it. This should be offline before the family could see it. Mm. And it was gone by within two, two or three hours. Mm. Uh, because of good uh, uh, relations I have with the police team in Twitter. Uh, so it's a personal connection as well because I know them. Uh, in some other, in, with some other networks, it's not like that. By the way, it wasn't anti Semitism, it wasn't racism, it was just. Human. Pure hate and oh, uh, uh, a very evil way, you know. But I proved them that this account um, is, the, it's not the Israel account. This is an account run by a terrorist organization uh, for propaganda purposes only, to hurt people emotionally. So they took it down. Facebook uh, took down the 10, by the way, 10 Facebook pages uh, of uh, Oro Shaul. Uh, uh, May rest in peace. Uh, took them two or three days to take them down. Yes. Um, who uh, supports your organization? How do you um, fund it? And you've got a hundred students working right. for you, and they have scholarships. How does that work? Um, the question was uh, about uh, the funding of the uh, ISCA and uh, how do we get the scholarships. Um, so uh, our funding, all of our money is going to um, scholarships. The scholarships uh, are funded by the National Union of Israeli Students, the ISTA Foundation, and we have several projects with other organizations. Uh, we had uh, some donations from uh, bodies in uh, Europe, uh, research bodies. Uh, I'll give you an example, the Fondation pour la Noire de la Shoah in Paris. Institute for the study uh, of the Holocaust. Um, it's a governmental foundation, and uh, yeah. Yes, miss. Um, me? Yes. Um, do you ever threaten a boycott of a certain site and then like get tough with them? Excuse me. Can you repeat um, that? Um, do you ever threaten to boycott? I mean, there's not that many Jews in the world, but maybe Jews plus you know. Sympathizers to say, well, you know, if eBay has this, we're not going to buy anything on eBay. Um, your question was uh, if uh, we ever considered uh, boycotting certain websites that continuously no. allow anti Semitic hatred mm -hmm. to be uh, posted there. Um, boycotts uh, doesn't work. No. <laughs> um, especially when it comes to large websites. The key is to work with them, not against them. Um, and, you know, I just can't, uh, I mean, I can't ask people to boycott eBay. Or it's, uh, it's an essential yeah, it's so to boycott Amazon. Um, World Jewish uh, 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 the World Jewish Congress um, had a campaign two years ago uh, uh, with, uh, against Amazon uh, and asked them to take down Holocaust denial literature uh, from Amazon. It's still there. Some of it's still there. But again, it wasn't a boycott 
it was a call, it was a campaign to um, uh, um, to make them do something. This is the way to uh, do it: to use the internet um, and not uh, not for boycotts. Uh, we need to remain uh, on a positive way and, and, and uh, cooperate with them. Yeah. If you ask nicely, most yeah. of the time. Another question: Did somebody from I I read this thing? Anybody, is this from your organization? No, it's not mine. It's horrible. Oh. Yes, yes, me. I don't know if anybody else read it, but it's like it's apologizing for all the anti-Jewish violence in Israel and really an awful thing. I, I'm surprised to even find it here. Yeah, I'll explain that. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Sure, too. All right. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question. There are a couple. First of all, Kola Kavod. You're really doing some wonderful work. I think everybody here would applaud uh, the efforts. I'm curious, is this being um, organized by the Ministry of Propaganda or whatever it is in the Gaza and the Palestinian Authority to, are they paying people to do it or is it just uh, creative individuals who are creating hate on the internet? Is there a real organized effort to train them how to do this, inspire them, or is it just happening randomly? Um, I'll repeat the question. Um, you asked me if uh, the Palestinian excitement in Arabic is uh, being financed by any official, uh, any official group, uh, the Palestinian Authority, or this is just a random civil thing. Um, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, some of it is a civil thing. Uh, people that are posting, well, you can see um, you know, the, the pages that are operating from Gaza, um, <coughs> the material they post online, what they produce, it looks very nice. Uh, nice, yeah? It's very, very aesthetic, it's very clean, um, and this, uh, in order, of course, to people to share them. Um, I would say, in my opinion, that because it's so, look at the, Look at the the, 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 the entire I mean, cameras, and there is a script and so on. I would I I think again I, I don't know for certain. Uh, this is a question maybe for someone uh, uh, official in Israel, but uh, I believe so. I believe that uh, yes. Um, and I want to show you a video. Um, for my clip, it's a new one. Um, and look at the look at the level of uh, it's a music video. It's a very short one. I want you to look at the the level of uh, uh, very sophisticated, very professional, very very professional. Um, it's uh, about uh, um, inciting to blow up buses again in the new Intifada. Um, in the past two weeks uh, among Palestinians uh, of a group that uh, uh, inciting for people to take a stand, take the uh, suicide vest and go blow up a bus with, of course, uh, the Jews always look like Jews and then against the stereotypes of the Yamakai, uh, uh, 
and the pay is like like in every form. Yes, it's always the payas, it's always the yamata, streimos, you name it. It's always, it's always like that. Uh, so so that answered your question. So there, there may be a way to say that there's a, a line from inciting in schools, teaching children to hate, teenagers teaching them how to create this kind of anti-Semitic... Anti there's a lot of money there. Yeah. yeah. It's, there's a lot of money there, for, yeah. for, for sure. Uh, this costs money. Yeah. You know, look at the locations and everything. They took a bus. I mean, it's not an Egged bus, the largest Israeli uh, uh, public transportation yeah. company. Uh, but they printed it <laughs> as if uh, it's an uh, Egged bus, the green buses, uh, for, the, for the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know who wrote this. I don't know who Shlomo wrote. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I meant to. Wait, it's the funny. idea that yeah. children are doing this because out of frustration. Right. They yes. So we, poor well, things. we I, so I want to explain. Yeah. We created something called Flashpoint, and sometimes we've done things where we've given uh, two different points of view from people, and in this case, um, this was an is Israeli military person. Who, who wrote this? He's on the left. Shlomo Blum is from the INSS. Yes, but he's, he's yeah. been, you know, military. He used to work with them. Yes, he works with them. So, there, and we have actually a Palestinian who wrote sort of, I wouldn't call it counterpoint, but um, Basamayi, who wrote about, about the um, failure of the Palestinian leadership. It was a highly critical essay about how the Palestinian leadership has led them on the wrong path, is doing so many horrible things. So it was it was to it was to show different interpretations from Israel as to what was happening with the campaign of violence. And I would agree with you. I, I standing alone you wouldn't, you wouldn't see, see it. it. You wouldn't you see it. Get, you On our website it. you could see how it was done. It just happens that yeah. only I mean, one piece of it got got passed out. I just oh, feel listening to the mainstream media. Yeah. I get it quite enough of this, you know. Yeah. But well, we still have to I don't, show you. I don't think so. We still have to. This, this, this yeah. is very rare. You might, that just we get cast it. It. you might just frame it. This yeah. is one point of view. Yeah. Well, I thought, yeah, it's a very odd to have like a very like legalistic like, looking. It doesn't represent. No, I saw the disclaimer, yeah. but it's just that I, I really think we get ninety percent of this BS yeah. all yeah. the time. We I, cannot avoid it. From, I would agree sometimes with from you, Jewish people themselves. I, would, yeah, I, would I, agree I, I feel I feel the urge to protect Basem is the human rights uh, actor. Oh, no, 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 he was saying I'm, he was. He's a, he's a great guy, he is a very, very much, a, a, I don't know if he's pro-Israel, he is anti-Palestinian authority. Uh, he says that Israel has a right to exist, that it's going to be a, here. He's a major criticizer of uh, Palestinian authority. Oh, I think I saw him speak with the Rolex watch on. He's wonderful. Not undemocratic methods. This is playing into a problem yeah. that we have. Like, yeah. as they put, I was at Columbia oh. University today, and they have like the apartheid. Wall, oh, but yes. not, this week? and um, they have, uh, and they have the it is the, the students supporting Israel put up a much bigger, much nicer display that they borrowed from Stand with Us, and they have next to it is uh, is artists for Israel let them a Pinocchio, uh, giant inflatable Pinocchio, it's like fifteen feet tall, and is holding up a sign about uh, 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 like the apartheid is empathy abuse, and. But it's it's frustrating because, well, like we're li like the Israeli government in our case is lying too. Because why are we it, why are we controlling status in, in the status in Gaza and why are we occupying the West Bank? We're not leaving anytime soon. There's no intention. So it's hard. It, and so it, it's hard when you have when you have the Israeli government not standing up for all of the, their activities. And then asking American Jews to look to 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 say yes, we support the organization of Israel, but there, Israel has I no borders. I give you my opinion about this topic because uh, I engaged with uh, a lot of it. Uh, just the, the delegitimization of Israel and uh, this process that we are experiencing in the past ten years. Uh, or, I mean, it's been going on for. Uh, since the since the establishment of the of Israel, but uh, the, the intensity maybe uh, of the, the, the Western discourse, European and American discourse, um, not everything should be blamed for the Israeli government. 
uh, in my opinion, because uh, this battlefield is being, uh, the accusations are being generated by activists, civil activists, and civil movements. The, uh, uh, the answer should be civil activists and civil movements. A, a government, uh, or the Israeli government, I believe they have some, I mean, they do what they do. There is the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, there is the uh, embassies and so on, but they need, they have a, a state to run as well. Uh, this battle is uh, 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 on our hands. Uh, me and you uh, and other activists um, and uh, to be on, a ci on civil hands, not governmental. Um, I think I read an article, I don't know if anybody else did, how the Israeli government is beginning to understand the importance of social media and starting to take a closer look at what's going on and well, possibly getting involved. Be. So, I mean, do you know anything about that? Mm -hmm. There are some efforts. Um, the Israel Project? Uh, Israel, I, I don't know, but this well, is not the government. Is that? It's, that government? It's, an no, no, it's an American organization. It's an American organization. In Washington. It's the younger generation um, of Israeli there politicians. Is a, there is a ministry, <laughs> for, there is a ministry uh, for strategic affairs. Uh, he's in charge of the battle, uh, the battle against BDS. Again, I can, uh, let's say that it should be uh, on civil hands not governmental hands. I don't know how would you react when a government or government uh, official uh, would suggest arguments for you. Uh, again, it's up to us, not governments. Yes. Uh, <coughs> do you show those videos to the State Department of the United States? A Palestinian get three billion dollars. It is three years ago they got three billion dollars support from the United States and look what they do with the money that's one thing another thing when you go on all those websites <coughs> wouldn't it be can you write on it because why can't you write you ignorant people if not the Jews half of you will die of polio of syphilis of all those you use your cell phones and maybe the Jews would be you know, all of the, the only one that survived. Facebook itself. Huh? Yes. Why don't you? That's the second. I will, uh, so I will, uh, I will uh, repeat the question. Uh, you asked if I'm uh, showing this uh, yeah. videos to State yeah. Department yeah. officials yeah. and if we are uh, commenting or uh, doing some sort of uh, uh, comments uh, about the uh, hate posts. Uh, on Facebook or other social uh, media platforms. Um, so people invite me to show it, <laughs> I'm showing it. Um, I have to say that uh, uh, more people are aware of, are aware of that and there are several institutions that uh, uh, make those videos accessible to general public by republishing them with commentary, such as the uh, Palestinian Media Watch, uh, uh, Memory, uh, Institute. Uh, they are monitoring Palestinian, Arab, Arabic, or Farsi uh, uh, media and uh, social media. So, uh, uh, can I just add to this? Just, just a minute. Okay. Uh, traditional media and social media. Um, for your second question, uh, are we uh, commenting there? The answer is a big no. And why? Because it is a waste of time. And it is better to take it down instead of explaining uh, to brainwash people uh, what it is. So the more people, I mean, sometimes it works, but I came to an understanding that this should not be online. Um, it, is a, it is an imminent threat and it should be taken down. Uh, and playing with, oh, let's say, suggest some other purposes. I mean, the video is about murdering Jews. I mean, you know, the, the, the actual existence of it is, is, a, is, a, is a mistake. Um, taking it down is the best thing, uh, and it is against the, the law in some countries, and against uh, the community standards of Facebook itself. What, what I was going to say is that the State Department doesn't have anything to do with the, the allocation of the money, it's Congress. 
And so it's APAC and organizations like that that are working behind the scenes to get that kind of, that money cut. So the State Department may propose it, but it passed by Congress. By the way, it happened in, yeah. with other organizations such as the uh, UNRWA. Oh. Uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, dropped the financing of UNRWA because of uh, uh, incitement in uh, school classes uh, and yeah. other, yeah. other places. So I just want to come back again, unfortunately, to this question about um, what, what's out here. Um, I think I'll give you an example. Um, there is a famous Israeli singer, well-known worldwide and a popular singer in Israel, um, a major organization that has both a basis in Israel and the diaspora invited her to sing at their Yom Ha'atzma'ud benefit in Noah. Canada. Noah? Well, you, you said it, not me. Um, and, yeah. and then she was dropped from the, from the program because people objected to her more left-leaning positions on Israel. But then I heard that the Israel consulate in, or the embassy of Canada, the Israeli embassy of Canada, was inviting her to do a concert for Yom Ha'atzmaut. I don't know if it's true, it was reported in the media, but that was something that was reported. Yeah, well, so Canada is now very anti-Israel, so that has all yeah. changed since oh, so well, well, it's it's Israeli. I will I will so the Israeli, the Israeli Embassy of Canada, the oh, state yeah, of I Israel's yeah, yeah. representatives in Canada, if the re news report is correct. So Israel recognizes that they have been victims of cultural boycotts of singers and yeah, entertainers, deciding not to come to Israel. Yeah. And here, they I don't think they want that promoted at all. I'm just, I'm interpreting it. So I, I'm saying that Israel is a vibrant democracy. It's a vibrant yes. society where different points of view are expressed. So this is one point of view. I don't agree with that point of view, but there are, there's something that's so important about Israel's democracy and vibrancy as a society that allows different points of view to be heard and to interchange. So that's, that's it. I will, I will say just one thing about it. Um, I am not speaking on behalf of the Israeli consulate or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. I'm a human rights activist. This is what I do. Uh, not affiliated to them, but uh, uh, Noah is, is uh, as far as I know, is against the boycotts. Okay. Uh, he is a well-known criticizer of Israeli policies, internal Israeli policies. Fine. Um, and uh, I'm actually supposed to uh, meet her uh, sometime in the near future uh, about that subject uh, uh, specific. Uh, following my request, because she's getting a lot of backlash, and uh, so it will happen. Can keep you up to date. If the Israeli government is so horrible to these people, why do they all want to live yeah. under the Israeli umbrella? Why don't they go to I don't know, all those other Middle Eastern countries if they? If it's so horrible, number one. Number two, I don't know if this really concerns your organization, but right now CUNY, that's the state-run school, city-run schools, there is such harassment of Jewish students that in John Jay College, which is publicly funded, three Jewish students have had to transfer out. Now, is this all their fault? Do you make the case that they, they deserve this because they're Jewish. And Students for Justice in Palestine, I never knew this, probably you all do, was started by Jewish kids who I think have it too, had it too good. They never had any adversity or anti-Semitism. Well, we're also a product of the Muslim Student Association and the Muslim Brotherhood. So, not just Jewish. I'm sorry? They're, they're, they're a product of the Muslim Brotherhood and the Muslim Student Association. Yeah. That's, you know, that unfortunately, some Jewish students are a part of it and Jewish Voice for Peace, part of it. But that's, like J Street. Yeah. I mean, well, um, on behalf of ISCAP, I'd like to say thank you to this wonderful audience and to uh, actually have a, I, uh,
Okay, guys. Best around the, our uh, 